Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is if you have your sun in Aries and your moon in Cancer. Aries and Cancer are in the cardinal modality and they are the movers and shakers of the zodiac. Also, Libra and Capricorn are part of that. And so these two signs are doers. To have them in your personal points is really an asset because it means that you have um, the ability to initiate and that is so important for anyone who is trying to succeed at something. It's easy to talk about something and plan it out, but you have to actually do it. And these signs are doers. So uh, one of the things that is, um, you could say, a bit of a challenge is that these two signs square off to each other in astrology. And whether that forms a, a square um, in your chart is going to depend uh, on the individual's natal chart because everyone will have a different degree sun and moon. So that's not going to be a done deal. However, if you look at what signs are involved in um, these co this combination, you can see that that alone is quite challenging. The sun is exalted in the first house that Aries rules. And it makes a lot of sense because the first house is the house of the self. So Aries, as a sign ruling the first house, is a sign that is all about being an individual. And Aries people are fiercely independent. And you add that cardinal modality to it, and they are people who they want to implement their unique and independent vision for the world. So suffice it to say, somebody who's in Aries is going to have a hard time working for somebody else. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but in some cases, there may be uh, power struggles that the Aries person experiences because they simply resent having to take orders instead of giving orders, which is what the cardinal signs do so well. Um, they tend to ascend to positions of authority. So your sun sign is really connected to your goals, what you aspire to become, you know, how you aspire to shine your light. With, with a sign like Aries, you want to encourage other people to be individuals, to be brave in life, not to kind of cower uh, in fear, in, you know, on any level, like, um, standing up for yourself. There's, there's a strong element with Aries about the warrior, you know, that's kind of the archetype because, um, Aries is ruled by Mars, which is the God of war. So there can be this tendency to see life as a battle and to, you know, kind of, in some cases, um, there might be some battles. I was going to say create um, battles, but I think I would. I would. I think the moon sign is more prone to that because that would be more of the shadow self. I think the sun in Aries is more likely to fight somebody else's battles. So you might be the kind of person that always champions the underdog, and you're always maybe your cause is against these, you know, giant entities that threaten to, to, uh, you know, control us all, the government, you know, that's a, that's a big one, uh, corporations, whatever. And so there's a, so suffice it to say, there's a lot of idealism with the sign of Aries. And because, because uh, you're ruled by Mars, you just have a lot of energy. And it's, I wouldn't call it nervous energy, like maybe 
Virgo or Gemini, for instance, I feel like it is this, you know, rearing to go kind of a vibe. So Aries, this combination, I shouldn't just say Aries, but this combination may be always busy with projects, always doing something. Even if you're retired, you might be working around the house, puttering around, doing this, doing that, not sitting still necessarily. So, um, you know, the, the, the sign of Aries is known for its hot-headed quality or volatility, emotional volatility. Again, I would place that more in the camp of the, of the moon sign. Um, and I'm talking about if Aries is the moon sign, because the person is going to be more um, emotional with it being in the moon position. With the sun, it I think it will bring out the higher qualities of Aries, the bravery, the resourcefulness or the independence. Um, you could, I don't know about the King of Wands in the Tarot, if it's associated with Aries or Leo or Sagittarius, but it's definitely that independent fire energy, that alpha male energy. And so, yes, that's another thing to mention is that Aries is a masculine sign. So if you're a female and your son is an Aries, you're going to be, you're not going to be the little woman uh, submissive in the background. Now, because of social conditioning nowadays, that's probably not too commonplace in uh, mainstream Western society. However, even older generations of, um, women uh, who are Aries people probably were kind of pioneers. That's another archetype for Aries is the pioneer. And I think of someone like Gloria Steinem, who was um, one of the leaders of the women's lib movement of the, of the early 70s, and she is an Aries. And um, not surprising to me because even in her generation where, you know, all you have to do is go on YouTube and look at the coffee commercials from the early 60s, they're, they're really funny, um, but they're just bizarre how demeaning towards women they, they were. It's like, the, it's like this brainwashing to, to men and women about uh, women staying in their place and worrying about what a man thinks of their coffee. Uh, but they're still really funny. The, the, one of the tendencies, too, that has to be mentioned is the extreme quality. Because it can go the other way. You can have somebody who is very uh, willful with the sun in Aries, who male or female, I should say, who is not cooperative with others, my way or the highway, um, that would be maybe their son is afflicted. You know, it has hard angles to it. Um, there, there could be mitigating circumstances. But the reason I want to say this is because the the person who's the pioneer can also be the um, dictator can be somebody who just doesn't want power for themselves and is self-empowered, but they they extend it to other people. That would be somebody who's imbalanced, who um, you know doesn't doesn't have a sense of um, their own personal power, so they're trying to seek it in others. So in general, I would say that the sun in Aries is extremely dynamic and very positive, can be super positive, believe that, you know, believe in self-growth and bettering oneself. So it's very inspirational for careers like coaches, for instance. And I'm not just talking about with sports, I'm talking about life coaches, 
So, um, and actually, I think that that um, such a person, just based on the Aries, not necessarily the moon in Cancer, I think that such a person who is an Aries that uh, was thinking of, of working with others, I think a coach is better than a therapist. There are sometimes there are these uh, debates online about if a life coach is somebody who is really um, qualified to help other people because they don't have the same credentials as somebody who goes to university to get a whatever master's degree, doctorate in psychology to be able to practice counseling or whatever it takes. And the truth is that a coach is a different type of uh, professional and professional, even if they're not, um, you know, they don't have some kind of course that they took training. I mean that they're getting paid for helping others. Sometimes you have like a diet coach and basically what they're doing is they might be providing some of the information that the person needs to take action upon and then also cheering them on, like being a professional cheerleader. And Aries people would be fantastic for that. In terms of the moon of moon in Cancer, we're talking about um, a moon sign that is, you know, rule... Um, that the moon rules, the moon rules cancer. So you could say it specializes in what cancer is all about. And how this translates is that this is a very emotional position. So I do feel that this combination can be difficult because if you just look at, forget about the square, if you just look at what the, what Aries that I just described independently and then talking about, and I'm talking about like this autonomous kind of a vibe, this, you know, can-do spirit and um, being very positive. Cancer is a feminine sign because it's a water sign. The earth and water signs are fem feminine signs. So it's more passive. Yes, it's a cardinal sign, but its nature is inclined as a feminine sign to kind of um, go within rather than without. So even on the basis of like, you know, the, the masculine signs are extroverts and the, and the feminine signs are introverts. So even on that front, there is like this, it's almost like blowing hot and cold. You may be the kind of person that sometimes you want to socialize and sometimes you just want to, you know, go under your um, cozy blanket at home. Cancer in astrology rules the fourth house of home and family. So it is the home body personified. That doesn't mean that that even like a sun and cancer person would just stay at home all the time, but it specializes in that area of life. And so it tends to resonate very deeply with that. So you have both of these sides to yourself. And being that the sun is the most important influence, you may be exasperated by your moon sign and and your reactions emotionally you can be very sentimental you could be very maudlin which is kind of like an um over the top sentimentality you know being sentimental is fine um i think it's beautiful that you that people think fondly of the past and sometimes i think you know it's human nature I'm sure I'm sure there are a lot of people that are like me and you just get into this kind of a mood and you start listening to all these songs that were popular when you're in high school or something or maybe when you're in grammar school and you just go on this binge of listening to music of a certain era 
and it brings back fond memories. The thing about being maudlin is it's like over over the top, overly sentimental. And then you add the sun sign that is very excessive. Aries can be very excessive, not in the same way as Leo, but just kind of extra in terms of, you know, that, that, that kind of like, um, dominant, dominant energy or even domineering energy. So, um, or even self-absorption sometimes being a Sagittarian myself, another fire sign, I do believe that the fire signs are very self connected and yes, it can be self-absorbed, but not necessarily in a narcissistic way, narcissistic way, but it still can manifest as other people thinking, oh, that person is too into themselves, you know, and I can, I can see it and I can definitely see it with Aries. Um, but it's the, the bottom line is that it, it, um, are in the cardinal modality and they are the movers of the zodiac also libra and capricorn are part of that and so these two signs are doers to have them in your personal points is really an asset because it means is the most important influence you may be exasperated by your moon sign and and you believe that the fire signs are very self connected and yes it can be self absorbed but not necessarily in a narcissistic way narcissistic way but it still can manifest as other people thinking oh that person is to themselves. And I can I can see it, and I can definitely see it with Aries. Um, but it's the the bottom line is that it. Oh, <laughs> I was I was recording, so I'm like, oh wow, it's still recording this. Okay, good. Well, the bottom line is that. Th- the the fire signs don't need other people to what we would say like um lift them up fire signs are very self directed so the aries part of you is definitely like that and leads the way however because cancer is in the moon position there may be times when you feel emotionally dependent on others where you want reassurance, you might feel unloved or, you know, ignored, whatever you want to call it, insecure in some way, uh, maybe emotionally vulnerable. And it will be very hard for people on the outside to reconcile that because of how you tend to come across. Now you have to also look at the rising sign, um, all of your inner planets, but the rising sign as well, because that will be the impression you make. Although I would say that's more of a superficial impression. It could still affect your behavior, behavioral patterns. And that certainly could give uh, other people certain ideas about you that may not be true 100% of the time. The moon in Cancer is very nurturing. The sun in Aries is very like, um, you know, you've got this, like if you are a parent and you have this combination, (laughs) this is, I was going to say like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but it's not like, like it's something that's bad. It's just that it's like a split personality Um, with your child. There may be times when you're just like almost, it almost seems like you're insensitive where you're like, Hey, you know, shake it off. Um, don't get too, don't be too sensitive about 
the fact that you fell down or whatever. And then sometimes you might be very um, overprotective because cancer can certainly be overprotective. So uh, whether it's with a child or in a relationship, you might bl blow hot and cold. And that can be very crazy making for other people because they can't understand you and you probably can't understand yourself. And, you know, it isn't very um, easy, suffice it to say. The moon in the moon in astrology represents what what we need to feel safe. And with the moon in cancer, there is a need for that material security and that, you know, that that place, that nest, that place you can go to to escape the world. So even from a young age, in certain cases, especially if you came from a difficult family situation, you may dream of owning a home. And because your son is in Aries, you may be very um, willing to do whatever it takes to work hard and to earn the money to be able to get a home. And this combination, I think, is good for um, finance finances. The only thing, this is another funny thing because Aries can be a spendthrift and very generous and Cancer can be very conservative with money. So you may have those moments that kind of go back and forth where you're excessive in one way. It's like the pendulum swinging back the other way. You spend too much in your eyes and then you become very uh, tight fisted with money. But I do think that you have what it takes to be able to make your financial dreams come true. In terms of your mood, you might be moody. And um, other factors would have to determine if part of that would lead to kind of emotional outbursts. There's a possibility. Uh, look at your Mars sign and see if it squares off. Like if you have Mars and Aries, then for sure that you'll form a square and you may have eruptions. And I think a lot of those eruptions will be around the issue of whether or not people love you enough. This is one of the things that Aries, uh, I'm sorry, that Cancer, Moon and Cancer is prone to do is like maybe almost being demanding when it comes to love. And that doesn't go over too well with others. People want to feel free when they offer love. They don't want to feel like they're obligated. So you have to look within yourself if you resonate with what I'm saying and to see how can you modify your behavior. Because if you, if you think about it, what is coming up is fear is fear of being alone and unloved. And when you apply that very, um, what I would call that true grit that your sun sign has when it comes to maybe career matters, success, um, maybe overcoming adversity, uh, financial adversity, if you grew up without much money and then you just like own your own home at a young age and you're just able to do all these things when people that are your age are still doing doing um are still like living at home or doing other things and you already have established yourself this way you can feel proud of that but the biggest liability that you have or one of them is your emotional nature. You have to get that under control because even fire signs are emotional. So this is, but in a different way, more like passionate about causes and, and things that are going on. But still there is, you know, that, that emotional nature with both your 
sun and your moon sign, and you may even have more going on with the rest of your personal points. So um, learning how to become emotionally mature and emotionally self-reliant are so important. Emotional maturity means that you're able to pinpoint what is at the root cause of your feelings. And if it's within a relationship, ask for what you need, but not demand it and not guilt somebody into giving it to you. Um, Cancer is the master manipulator and great at guilting. And that that's, um, you know, that's a form of coercion. That's not what that's not like true, true love. If you were to get a response by doing something like that, a person may feel a sense of duty. They may feel a sense of guilt, like, um, yeah, I am neglecting this person, but they're doing it out of that, which is that negative feeling instead of something genuine. But there is a very um, compassionate nature. And this will make, even though it does form a square in astrology, I do think this will uh, soften some of the rough edges of Aries. Aries people can tend to be very brusque, very impatient, and uh, often, you know, I, I said often, I should say sometimes come across as rude because you're just like cut to the chase. You, you want to move on to the next thing. And that can lead to people thinking that you're being insulting to them, that you're, you know, you're being rude. When in fact, you're just being yourself. There's a very refreshing, authentic quality with uh, the, the sun in Aries or Aries ascendant. However... Um, when you introduce the moon in cancer, it can complicate matters. And we don't want to have complications. We want to be as free of obstructions as possible. So, you know, getting that in gear. And the, 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 um, also, I was saying, like, talking about insensitivity, it isn't because Aries and fire signs in general are truly uncaring, but we are signs that believe in personal power. We believe that we can solve our own problems and we believe that other people can solve their own problems. So it's not about rushing in and trying to save somebody from themselves. That's not a typical response of a, of a fire sign. Also, we tend to be blunt in speech. And I can't believe how many people resent that. I mean, I can just see that myself having Mercury in Sagittarius, being a sun in Sagittarius. I don't care because I'm, that's a bit different than some people say mean things and they say, well, I'm only being honest. That's not what I'm talking about. I've had to learn d- diplomacy as I've gotten older um, because I was just completely unfiltered. Now I try to state things in a way that is more, you know, kind of protective of people's vulnerability because even people who are acting badly, they can have very low self-esteem. So, and, and just in general, people, people can be a lot more sensitive than you can see on the surface. And if you say something kind of like out of ignorance, like you don't realize that what you're doing is really upsetting to that person. Um, That can really um, set them off, maybe not like anger, but it can, it can really bother them. So I think the moon in cancer helps us often some of that. You have a very nurturing spirit. And um, I think that a lot of you will want to become parents and you might become parents early because Aries is so impatient. So you may even be the, the teenage parent um, or something, but you might just want to do it as early as possible. But be careful, make sure that you're with somebody 
who really um, you want to co-parent with and also think about your finances. But I think that this combination would do just that. Um, in terms of professions, I think that you would excel, like I said, anything where you're inspiring others um, to go after their dreams. Also, being a teacher, maybe of young children, would be something, because you're like a big kid yourself. You might be very creative, so you might be in the arts. And I could even see something like a person in the military or a police officer. Aries would be associated with that. But when you talk about the moon and cancer, it's very patriotic. It really loves the country it's in and wants to protect it because it's protective. In terms of love, um, this combination is wild, wildly romantic. So, you know, that, you know, that's great, but also be careful because Aries is a lusty sign. Mars is the ruler and Mars can be the sex drive, the libido. So Aries people tend to mistake or can't tell the difference between lust and love. Um, if you're really turned on by somebody, you might think that you're madly in love with them. Don't make that mistake. You may have already had a situation like that where it was a one dimensional relationship and you finally figured that out. You finally figured out that it was just about the sex, basically. And um, with the moon in Cancer, and especially for women, because the moon represents the feminine and Cancer is a feminine sign. Um, be very aware of any tendency when you're looking for love of using sex as a way to kind of get that, I'm talking about heterosexual relationships, get that man to commit to you because you might think that that is the answer because with the moon in cancer, the person doesn't want to be abandoned. They, that's like their worst fear. So they may feel like, okay, well, this is how men behave or what this is what they need. So I'm going to give them what they need so I get what I need. And that's just a, another form of manipulation. You want to come to relationships, seeing that person in a holistic way and presenting yourself in a holistic way. So anyway, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.